Hey guys, so today I want to talk a little bit about the Pine Tab, the Risk 5, and the Pine Tab 2, which are out now. As you can see, they're still available on the Pine 64 store. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised by the price, and I think it's going to be some very interesting devices these two items you can get it with four gigabytes of ram or eight gigabytes of ram and you can also take a look at some of the benchmarks between the original pine tab here and the rock chip rk3566 here i also have videos of the original pine tab on my channel you can see some of the things i've done with the original pine tab so as you can see this is two years ago when i first got the original pine tab so let's get out of there and also there's a video i have using the internal sdr on the original pine tab where i did a slight modification to extend an antenna port on the outside so that i could switch out antennas easily and this video covers uh, using my internal SDR to listen in on remote speakers, which can act as a microphone when the amplifier is active. And so that is just one demonstration that I did with my Pine Tab, my original Pine Tab. And since this is going to be much more powerful, I'm really looking forward to trying this and sharing some of the results on the channel. So it should make SDR more interesting as well because, you know, even though the original Pine Tab was great with the internal SDR, worked surprisingly well. Now this one is going to be much more powerful. So I think it's going to be a much greater experience. The original Pine Tab had two gigabytes of RAM. With the Pine Tab 2, you'll see four or eight gigabytes of RAM. So there should be a lot better, you know, performance overall and ability to run different types of SDR applications. The original Pine Tab, I also covered some of the applications that were available there. And of course, this is based on one of Pine 64's single board computers and because of that you know there's also some cross development there you can see the pine tab the first version it actually was pretty performant so it was some, definitely a usable device something i enjoyed using and i still use to this day so the Pine Tab 2, I'm really excited to see this, and I wanted to share a video on it based on the fact that it's on the store right now for pre-order. So if you're interested in something, you know, it's starting at $159, which is really a great looking price in my honest opinion. And so, of course, I'm getting one of those. I already have my order in, so I'm looking forward to getting that. It says it may ship out sometime around mid-May. I wanted to make sure to do a video on this since... If anyone wants to follow along with some of the things I might do with my Pine Tab 2, uh, you might, if you want to get the pre-order, you know, now's the time. I don't know when this pre-order is going to end. So I want to make sure to make this video just to share that with everyone. To And I, I did a few other things as well. Like this is when I used, you know, a transmitter and did some receiving with GQRX with the internal SDR, having the threaded antenna port which I drilled a hole through the back of it and then threaded that through, bought some SMA ports to put on the outside of it and I actually have it fitting neatly inside the actual stand as well. So it's pretty exciting, I think, and maybe you'll think it's exciting too. So if you're interested in following along, I'm definitely going to introduce the Pine Tab in a video. So uh, look forward to doing that and... Uh, if you are interested in something like this, this is, I think, is going to become a great device. Of course, we haven't seen a whole lot of it in use out in the wild yet, but we will see a lot more of that, and I believe it's going to be a very interesting device. Of course, I don't recommend it for everyone. Like, if you've never used Linux, if you're, if you're someone who is avoidant of the command line, definitely probably not the right device for you, at least at this point in time. But if you're someone who's interested in learning more about Linux, sometimes the little bugs that may come along the way can be the best teaching guides that you may come across. So make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll be back later with more tech tips.